Clonazolam is a research chemical benzodiazepine that appeared on the market a few years ago, though it was synthesized in the 1970s. It's very potent, which has contributed to blackouts, inappropriate behavior, and unexpected unconsciousness. Though it has a reputation for being too powerful and potent, most of the problematic experiences just come from taking too much. As with any drug, the most I can do is provide an outline of the typical effects. Your experience is not going to perfectly match the description I provide, since there are different ways people can respond to a drug. Among the positive effects are anxiety reduction, mood lift, euphoria, muscle relaxation, sedation, and increased talkativeness. Its negative effects can include amnesia, drowsiness, dizziness, impaired coordination, disinhibition, unconsciousness, and cognitive impairment. All benzodiazepines share a general set of effects, but there can be differences in the relative strength of each effect per dose. In other words, one substance may be best for sedation, while another is best for anxiolysis. The properties found within this class of drugs have been utilized to treat insomnia, anxiety, panic, and muscle spasms. Clonazolam is a research chemical, so we have no research on its efficacy for any of those conditions. It probably has the potential to be useful, but if you're seeking treatment, you're better off with medical supervision and a more well-understood drug. Setting aside warnings about potency, the most common experiences of clonazolam are positive. There's a fair number of users who've said it's one of their favorite benzodiazepines, though others think it's too powerful in some respects, or that it's only worthwhile for sleep. Users typically find it's one of the more sedating and recreational benzos. So if you're taking a common or strong dose, it can hit you with a heavy level of sedation. Sleep isn't necessarily required, but people will feel more relaxed and be less interested in moving around. The recreational effects are highly variable. As a general rule, you're going to feel more mood effects if you're an anxious or stressed person, but sometimes even those who aren't escaping stressful feelings will still have an uplifted mood, including to the point of euphoria. But I wouldn't say a very euphoric mental state is a common experience. Clonazolam has also gained a reputation for producing a lot of memory impairment and and disinhibition with higher doses. Memory impairment can range from difficulty following a conversation to anterograde amnesia, where you don't remember most of the experience. In other words, a blackout. The disinhibitory action can be good or bad. Social interactions could be enjoyable and easier, while the flip side is you might say and do things that are inappropriate. Being disinhibited can feel good and can even be useful, but it's not the ideal state for decision making. Keep this in mind when deciding where to use the drug and who to use it around. I think the drug's reputation for easily causing blackouts or unconsciousness comes in large part from dosing issues. Vendors sell products with 0.5 milligrams or more, and users believe that's a common amount. In reality, 0.5 milligrams is a strong dose that's often going to be a lot more than necessary. As little as 0.1 to 0.2 milligrams can be effective, including for anxiolysis, a moderately enhanced mood and sleep induction. Users tend to report it similar with its overall feel to clonazepam, but may be stronger with its recreational properties. For functional applications, clonazepam can be better. It's pretty distinct from atizolam, which is also usually more functional and less recreational. Benzodiazepines, clonazolam included, usually produce a relaxed and carefree mental state. The majority of people don't find they're very recreational on their own, but they can make social activities more enjoyable and reduce stress when needed. Music enhancement is another potential effect. For some, just experiencing greatly reduced anxiety and less overthinking can feel liberating and recreational. There are people who notice euphoria, but I wouldn't go into clonazolam chasing that effect. If you don't notice it by the time you're using a strong dose, don't keep pushing the drug into riskier dosage territory with the hope of feeling great. People with anxiety find it's capable of almost entirely removing their normal anxious thought patterns, though its muscle relaxing, sedative, and hypnotic properties seem to be stronger per dose than anxiolysis. It's considered one of the most sedating benzos per dose. This property, along with having an easier time 
time sleeping is most significant during the first few hours. The sedation can be strong enough to actually make it an annoying quality of the drug, since not everyone is aiming to become tired. You could find yourself doing little more than sitting around or laying down. After those hours are over, the sedation can become less overwhelming. Depending on the dose in person, a light or common amount might offer an experience with a relatively minor sedation and perhaps a slightly energetic, uplifted buzz. But this varies a lot between people. Cognitive impairment is an issue even at common doses, making it harder to complete tasks or have a conversation. Memory impairment is usually minor at common doses, but it can still make an appearance, particularly with short-term memory. Impairment could become frustrating if it's getting in the way of an activity you want to accomplish. Memory issues progress as the dose increases, producing partial blackouts for a portion of the experience, and then amnesia for hours worth of time. If you're trying to remain functional and not come off as impaired, you'll want to stick to doses around 0.1 to 0.2 milligrams. Impairment and other issues, like slurring your words, become more prominent after that point. The hypnotic property of clonazolam makes it useful for natural insomnia or insomnia caused by the after effects of drugs like stimulants and psychedelics. It has a pretty long duration, so it may be more likely to keep you asleep all night compared to a shorter acting benzo, which might only be good for inducing sleep. The duration can be an issue due to grogginess and impairment when you wake up. If you need to drive or work less than 12 hours after you take it, avoiding the drug is preferable. Impairment can last upwards of 12 hours depending on dose, and people sometimes wake up still experiencing other effects like anxiolysis and muscle relaxation. Benzodiazepines impair sleep architecture, but people usually still get subjectively good sleep and even impaired sleep is still superior to insomnia. Some users report vivid dreams when sleeping on clonazolam. Especially when strong doses are used, an unpleasant hangover can be produced, featuring dizziness, nausea, low motivation, and ongoing sedation. A minority of users get angry, irritated, and aggressive because of the disinhibitory activity of benzodiazepines. Even if you're personally feeling good, your behavior towards others might become rude and careless, so you really need to be careful of the dose and know how these drugs impact you before taking them in a setting where you could create problems for yourself your motor skills are impaired, so it's common to end up with unsteady legs. Once you're at a strong dose, you could be stumbling around enough that holding on to things becomes a necessity. Physical euphoria is sometimes experienced with effects like a sensation of warmth in your face, head, chest, and other locations. Tingling, particularly in your lower limbs, can also occur. There are reports of people having blackouts, severe coordination impairment, and problematic disinhibition at doses around 0.5 milligrams, so you need to be cautious about how you use the drug. Disinhibition raises the chance of redosing, among other bad actions. Because the effects may be enjoyable, or because users are chasing recreational effects, they can be tempted to use more. But it's not a good idea to raise your dose under the influence. You should definitely avoid redosing due to thinking it's not adequately working in the first couple hours. The effects can take a while to build, so don't be quick to use more. Rebound, anxiety, insomnia, and depression are other issues that can appear after a single use or chronic administration. These issues become progressively more likely as you use the drug more often. If you're taking it to reduce the intensity of a psychedelic, make sure you only have access to a limited amount of the drug. A confused, anxious state is not the time to be figuring out doses, and you could easily end up taking too much if you're not careful. Lastly, delusions of sobriety are an issue. You can be significantly impaired mentally and physically while thinking your impairment isn't a big deal. This leads to people driving when they shouldn't and making other unwise decisions. And although people may tune into their impairment to some extent, perhaps because of stumbling, they'll still have a tendency to underestimate their impairment. Don't let your altered brain fool you into thinking you're fine when you really aren't. The sober version of yourself will have to deal with the consequences of your mistakes.
Orally, the drug lasts for 7 to 12 hours and begins working in about 30 to 45 minutes. Some users receive no or very light effects until 1 to 2 hours after administration. Initially, holding the drug in your mouth for sublingual or buccal administration can somewhat shorten the onset. Even when used orally, some people report effects in as little as 20 to 30 minutes, but it varies. Once it kicks in, the strength builds for at least an hour, sometimes longer. The the total duration is dose dependent. Very high doses can cause effects for upwards of 15 hours. Clonazolam is a benzodiazepine that's structurally similar to clonazepam. Both compounds feature a nitro group at the 7 position on the benzodiazepine ring structure, making them both nitro benzodiazepines. And they also feature a chlorine group at the 2 position of each of their respective structures. Clonazolam differs structurally from clonazepam by the substitution of a triazole ring onto the benzodiazepine ring structure to yield a triazolo benzodiazepine ring structure structure. Therefore, clonazolam can also be referred to as a triazolo benzodiazepine. Clonazolam's pharmacology has only been minimally studied. We know it shows potent benzodiazepine-like activity in animals, and it's likely functioning as an agonist at the benzodiazepine receptor site. That site modulates GABA activity at GABA-A receptors. Since GABA is the major inhibitory neurotransmitter in the brain, altering its activity through positive allosteric modulation can cause a wide range of effects. Each GABA-A receptor is a complex of five subunits positioned around a central pore, which is a channel for chloride ions. The complexes can be made of different subunits and be located in different regions of the brain. So, if you have a drug that displays a preference for one type of receptor over another, you can end up with different effects. For example, receptors with the alpha-1 subunit have historically been linked to sedation, while those with an alpha-5 subunit are primarily localized in the hippocampus where a change in activity can alter your memory performance. A light oral dose is 0.1 to 0.25 milligrams. A common dose is 0.25 to 0.4 milligrams and a strong dose is 0.4 to 0.5 milligrams. The drug's synthesis and effects were first described in a 1971 paper from Upjohn, a pharmaceutical company. Though it was researched, it was never brought to market. Its use as a research chemical drug primarily started around 2013. Clonazolam is one of the more recent semi-popular RC benzodiazepines. It's not as common as prescription benzodiazepines or atizolam. According to the EMCDDA, the detection of new benzodiazepines, including clonazolam, increased significantly around Europe in 2016, and the EU was first notified of its presence in 2015 with a report about its detection in Sweden. As of February 2018, clonazolam is uncontrolled in the U.S. It's a Class C drug in Australia, Schedule 4 in Canada, and Class C in the U.K. When you're on the drug, unconsciousness, impairment, and disinhibition are some of the main concerns. You could hurt yourself due to psychomotor impairment and potentially die from vomit aspiration if you're deeply unconscious. The latter is rare, but not impossible. Most benzodiazepine-only overdoses are non-fatal. However, the risk level changes substantially when you combine them with other sedatives like opioids and alcohol. Drugs with a CNS depressant effect should not be taken with clonazolam. With extended use, physical dependence can form, leading to tolerance and withdrawal. Daily use for as little as a week can build your tolerance, and the rate of tolerance development depends on the dose. Tolerance can also build at a different rate for different effects, with euphoria generally declining faster than impairment and sedation. Anxiety and insomnia from rebound or withdrawal symptoms can perpetuate physical and psychological dependence. You really don't want to overuse these substances. If you do become significantly dependent, tapering is recommended. And if you've been using benzos daily for a long time, a supervised detox is worthwhile. Withdrawal doesn't always produce highly unpleasant symptoms, but it can. These symptoms likely come from changes in GABA-A receptors that result in less inhibitory control, thereby exacerbating or causing many conditions. Symptoms include anxiety, cognitive impairment, insomnia, increased blood pressure, 
pressure, restlessness, shaking, and increased heart rate. Severe withdrawal sometimes causes psychosis and seizures. Psychological dependence can form when people are reliant on benzodiazepines to feel good or stress-free. The sense of everything is all right can be one of the best feelings in the world if you're normally stressed, but it's really best to avoid self-medication. If you have any questions, feel free to put them in the comments. The Drug Classroom is only funded by donations. This content is possible due to listener support. If you want to support, you can do so through Patreon, PayPal, or Bitcoin.